host, Uncle Mark, here with another episode of the IT Business Podcast, the show where me, a lowly IT guy, tries to help other IT guys run their business better, smarter, and faster. We do that with several types of shows. We have a live show that we do Wednesday evenings at 8 p.m., and then we have audio shows, and then we have combo shows, and that's kind of what we're doing today. We have an audio show that will be accompanied by a video. And we are joined today by Kevin Lancaster and Matt Solomon from the channel program. Guys, how are we? Doing great. Thanks for having us. Yeah, we know we've made it big time when we finally made it onto your uh, podcast. So thank you for having us. You were here before. (laughs) (laughs) We're just excited to be back. Well, yeah, when we were a repeat guest, we know that we've made it. (laughs) That's true. Yeah, when you've you've been invited back or welcome back, either way it works. (laughs) All right. Well, guys, we are here because you guys have been making some news and it's not, you know, the typical news that we get towards the end of the year where we talk about your little battle royale. Uh, You guys have a product you've been working on for quite some time. It's official now. uh, The product called Navistack. So who would like to do the honors of explaining what that is? Kevin, since I'm doing the show and tell, why don't you do the the explanation and all? And I'll provide the color commentary. All right, sounds good. So everyone knows this, this is how we make decisions. <laughs> we do it in real time uh, on the air live. Um, so the, the real quick backstory, right, is that you know I've I've spent twenty plus years in the channel. I grew up in a thirty million dollar IT consulting firm. Um, exited that, built arguably one of the fastest growing cybersecurity companies in the channel, and and sold that to Kaseya, then ran Corp Dev at Kaseya. So I've seen this industry from a number of different vantage points. Uh, But however you look at it, you see just friction built within our industry. You know, it's friction between the MSP, the IT service provider and the vendor, whether it's communication, whether it's they're just overwhelmed by a number of products, decision-making. And so we started down this path 18, 20 months ago of how how do we simplify this marketplace for everybody? And so we started with, what we call channel pitch, now channel engage, where we bring MSPs on anonymously and they would rate essentially the presentations of the vendors and the quality of their products. Then we started leaning into product reviews and we have several thousand product reviews um, on the site now. So really, you know, really you know, rich data about how the industry is looking at these solutions, these vendor solutions. And then and we just uh, released, to your point, as you mentioned, uh, we released Navistack. And the, the whole idea behind Navistack uh, is, the whole idea behind the platform in general, is to make the lives of the MSP, the IT service provider, that much easier. And so now an MSP can log into our platform. And they can just select which vendors that they're working with. So they can have a visual representation of their stack in one spot. Uh, and then they can access the content, the white label materials, the technical documentation, the sales collateral from all of the vendors in one platform versus having to log into 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 different vendor portals that an MSP might be using to deliver their services. And so we spent a lot of time uh, you know, getting to this point where we're improving the communication between vendor uh, and the MSP, but ultimately, you know, our, our job is our mission is to improve the efficiency and and you know the lives of of MSPs by giving them this really simplified platform to engage with their vendors, make decisions, communicate, uh, and and you know better grow their business. All right. So of course, I've got questions right off the bat. So I did go to the site. I signed in. Did not put any of my vendors in yet. Yep. I see that they're all kind of divided up into the nice categories and stuff, but you mentioned the idea of being able to go in and get information from all of your vendors in one portal. Now, are we talking just information, sales tools, or are you saying that we can actually get to our portals yeah. from inside of Navistack? Yeah. So it, it's, you can get into the portals. Um, eat the, the vendor partners that are part of channel program, Many of them have built out partner partner portals to buy into that one to many concept, right? MSPs are having to log into 30 different partner portals for white labeled materials, vendor documentation, blog, sales training. 
that's impossible. It also leads to about a 10% utilization rate across individual partner portals. And so we are solving a big problem or big issue that everyone has. Uh, by Marvin, if you've come in and obviously there's a visual now on the screen uh, for those listening on the podcast, but we're actually showing, you know, a, a slightly filled out uh, stack here. And once I've put the different vendors within um, my stack, I'd then be able to sort and look at the port the portal accesses that I've been granted already. So, you know, again, this is a sample. I'd be able to click into Nodeware and I've got them pulled up here. Now I can get my materials. So these are brandable content. I'd be able to click into this, drag and drop my logo into the into that document. I can get the vendor documentation. These are typically FAQs or whatever the vendor you know deems important that I as a partner of them uh, know about. That's what you're going to find in the vendor documentation. Then you've got the educational blogs and then training videos, depending on the content of the vendor. So again, just making it incredibly easy to access this all in a single place. And then in addition to that, they also have the ability to chat with their entire uh, ecosystem of vendors. So uh, if I was going to message somebody here at Nodeware, I'd be able to you know, send a message directly to them uh, within the portal. And same thing with Blumera. Jeremy Young's the one who's listed. So if they had multiple people listed, I'd be able to chat with potentially multiple people within that organization. All right. Another question, and I hope this doesn't take us too far off your path, but does this in a sense become a marketplace? Are we actually able to come in here, see all of the vendors that are a part of Navistack and select vendors in this portal? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can select, uh, yeah, I mean, we have today 400-ish vendors uh, in the platform. And, you know, we have a roughly 120 or, or so that are, are active vendors, paying vendors uh, for uh, the additional support. Uh, but the whole idea behind this is to democratize it. And so the vendor doesn't have to be a paying vendor. And we, you know, we've added, again, hundreds of vendors in here to help the MSP visualize their stack. Um, we'd encourage the vendors obviously to sign up and, and utilize the portal to make that, make that interaction easier. But yeah. Um, yeah. The, the whole idea is, 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 is serve up as, as many products in here as possible and make it easy for the MSP. And if we have a, you know, if you go in and search for a vendor that might not be listed, we have a nice little easy button in here that says, you know, go ahead and request this vendor and we'll reach out to that vendor. Uh, and, uh, and get them to participate, right? Yep. There you go. Matt's showing the visual on the screen. Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's the more that we can simplify this and centralize it, you know, the better it is for for the MSP. Well, and, it, and it's been neat, Marvin. I mean, over you know, we we just launched this like a week ago, and you know, there's there's companies that we we've just never heard of that are being added into this to their or being requested. Because um, again, as Kevin said, I mean, we have a huge list of vendors already in there. Uh, but every day we're seeing new vendors being added, uh, which is, is neat and will will give more visibility eventually to these vendors uh, that, you know, other MSPs are using vendors that we're not typically seeing at a, a trade show. And, and you know, so it, it's going to lead to bigger opportunities, I think, you know. I think McBain said there's roughly 35,000 vendors uh, that are in and around channel or have some form of a channel program. And so... Uh, you know, we'll see if we get the 35,000 different vendors and products, what have you. But, um, but yeah, it, to Matt's point, I mean, it, it, it's incredible. It's just a number of different uh, vendors that are, are requested uh, every day. Some are, some are, are big ones that you've heard of. Uh, but to Matt's point, I mean, there are so many emerging vendors and that's, that's part of one of the big challenges, right? Is that how do you make sense? How do you make decisions and how do you make sense between all of these different, you know, Cybersecurity, like you think, just pick one category like SOC. Like, how do you really, how do you really, you know, figure out who's differentiated in that SOC space? And so, you can search for them, or you can also look at the stack charts. You mentioned we had thousands of product reviews, and so you can go see based on peer reviews or peer, um, you know, peer submitted reviews. You know, which vendors are are moving up the stack, which ones are kind of lagging, and so it's just to bring that level of transparency to uh, to the MSPs, make it easier for them to find and manage their their vendors in one spot. Now, I understand the benefit to myself as an MSP being able to go someplace and 
see all of my vendors in one spot. I can see, okay, here's a category that I know I'm missing. Now, when I do the search, can I search for a vendor by category? Mm -hmm. Yes. You can, go ahead, Matt. No, I was gonna say, yeah, I mean, you could type in, if you were just, maybe you don't know which vendors, you know, are backup. Uh, so you would be able to search, you know, backup and recovery, BCD. I mean, you can get down to very specific categories. Okay. Uh, so we'll, for this case, let's go into backup and disaster recovery. So, now, let me, let me ask this question first. And for people sure. watching the video, they're going to see that when you clicked on backup, there were some vendors that popped up at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So the question is going to be, is there going to be some sort of preferential treatment? Do vendors pay to be higher up on the list? How does that work? Yes. So the ones that are have chosen to participate in our platform are definitely ones that are, are going to come up as suggested initially there. But again, it's an open ecosystem. Anybody can be, you know, there's free profiles for any vendor that wants to participate in our platform. Um, so yes, some will pop up like that. Uh, but in terms of accessibility, if, as you're looking at this stack chart, um, there are several on this list, I won't name which ones, that are not participating you know, in the platform today, but yet they're getting on these, these stack charts. And this is really neat about this, Martin. This is, you cannot buy your way to the top. This is based on product reviews from the community itself. So this is real-time data. It's, you're not having to wait a quarter or a year for this to update. If all of a sudden, you know, ScalePad got a bunch of new reviews, they're gonna move up, down, left or right based on those, on that feedback. All right, and for people yeah, that are not. choosing to listen, uh, there's a chart on the screen and it's got basically your four quadrants. Uh, at the top right, there's chart toppers. Uh, on the top left, high potential. The lower left, niche. And the lower right, challengers. Now, yeah. it doesn't say that any, I mean, you've got the green at the top. Green is always referred to as good. <laughs> and right at the bottom so yeah. is, is that indicative of the review system that you know those chart toppers are going to be in the top because they are the ones that have gotten the best reviews from the community right yeah we we have again to matt's point we have no uh influence over the reviews I mean, the reviews come in good bad or indifferent um and they're they're presented in in this in this uh on this chart and they're based on how their partners have reviewed the product um, you know, there are, you know, again, thousands of them there. Um, there are tons that are, are great. And then we do see tons that are less than flattering, you know, and it's not our job to, you know, uh, you know, bias these or what have you. It's just, it's to share what the industry, what the audience is, is, uh, you know, is, is uh, saying about these, these vendors and solutions. Uh, so yeah, this is, this is completely democratized. All right. And I should probably ask this question just because somebody will email me later uh, that, that doesn't know they're not a part of the channel program. They've never been a part of your review process. Are the reviews vetted in any way or can anybody just log in, sign in and say whatever they want about a vendor? So so anybody can log in and, and create an account. Um, when the review is submitted, we do make sure that it's an actual MSP, um, not just, you know, somebody, you know, creating a, a random Gmail uh, email account or what have you. So we'll look at it, just make sure it it, it kind of passed the, the, the smell test and then we'll hit uh, approve and then it'll let the vendor know that, hey, you just got a review, uh, you know, in your, you know, on your, on the stack. And so we'll give the, uh, the vendor a heads up that they got a review. Again, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, and so, so yeah, so it's, um, yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward process. All right. So from the very beginning, we can visualize our vendors in the stack. We can see other available vendors in the stack. We can streamline operations by doing a lot of things from this portal first. Uh, when I was prepping for the show, trying to, you know, do my due diligence, one of the things that it looked like it could do was enhance customer relations. So how do you guys see this helping, you know, us help our customers better besides the things we've already talked about? I think in, inherently one of the biggest challenges, um, let me start from the vendor's point of view. 
you know, as we were scaling ID agent early days were great, right? Where, you know, just about every partner had my cell phone number and they were texting me, Hey, you should do this. You should do that. And that was, that was manageable until maybe about 50, 50 partners. And we got to 500 or a thousand well, less than that. We got to a couple hundred. Yeah. We had to you know really invest in a channel enablement team. And so we brought on, you know, folks like Dan Tomaszewski and we built out, you know, arguably a world-class um, support, you know, enablement team, but most vendors as they scale, they have a hard time keeping that level of, of engagement and quality up with their, you know, with their, the partners that rely on them. And that's why you, you know, that's why Reddit and, uh, you know, areas become almost like the, the, I don't know, the, the megaphone for MSPs, IT service providers that are frustrated with their vendors, you know, because of the lack of communication or, or what have you, whatever the myriad of reasons are. Um, and so inherently the way we built it is that it, it does allow the vendor to communicate more fluidly, fluidly with their partner at scale and inversely you know, that should allow the partner to lean, you know, more heavily on their, their vendors for the data, for the support, for the materials, for the technical documentation, all the things they need. And if we can, if we can make that communication fluid between, you know, with this chat and it's all centralized, then that ultimately allows the MSP and gives them the, the support that they need to in turn, you know, better support their customers. Um, that's, it was, it was just one of the, again, you know, think, speak, thinking about it from a, a vendor point of view when I was on that side of the table, um, it was one of the you know, frustrating things that we would, um, we would do product updates. We came out with, uh, security awareness training, uh, on our platform as a product called bullfish, but we'd go out to Reddit and I'd see all kinds of comments, you know, one of these guys is going to put out security awareness training. Right. And it's like, well, geez, we put it out two months ago. So, you know, maybe the emails didn't get through or whatever, whatever reason. So, um, from a better point of view, it's, this should, this should absolutely help. Again, you know, on the MSP or IT service provider standpoint, I think we had a, a line card of about 70 different vendors that we were uh, working with and providing to our government customers. And it was, it was just, it was insane to try to get product updates and interact with our reps at some of the bigger organizations. And so um, ultimately, and again, this is why we leaned into this type of a model just to make that, you know, that, that more fluid that allows the MSP to grow better and, and rely more heavily on their vendors with this type of platform. Yeah. And, and Marvin, I would, I would add, you know, I, we would just see on, on the Facebook groups, forums, whatever, Reddit, so many of the issues are just miscommunications. Um, you know, it's, they didn't know how to, who to reach out to. And now they're ex expressing their frustration on Facebook. I don't know who to reach out to. I'm, and then they really get into the issue that they had. Um, so you see that that time and time again, and and ultimately, and this gets into sort of where we go with Navistack, you know, and it really becoming the homepage for MSPs is imagine a, a place where your technician can go and based on your stack, have all the contacts at, at the click of a button. You know, that that's what is unfortunately been lacking um, in, in these communities is they just don't always know who to con contact. And even the product reviews have led to unbelievable conversations between a vendor and an MSP. Uh, I'll give you a really quick example. I mean, some we knew what happened. I wasn't looking forward to the day when a vendor got a one-star review, uh, but but it happened. And we generally have a policy of, of a 48-hour kind of buffer time uh, to make sure that the MSP absolutely wants to go forward with a one-star review, because that's obviously pretty damaging to a vendor. Um, and I usually reach out to the MSP and say, you know, are you open to a conversation with the vendor? And We've had multiple occasions where they've gotten on calls with each other and whatever issue was had, you know, sometimes it's not fixable, but at least the couple of times that we've had that, we've bridged the gap between a miscommunication and fixed a problem. And for, the, for a vendor, they saved a customer. And for that customer, you know, that, that MSP, you know, they were able to stay with that, that vendor, not waste having the, you know, the spend more time changing of uh, vendors at the time. So yeah, there's been some really interesting scenarios that have taken place because of that transparency. So you mentioned communication and I agree with everything you've said. Part of me wants to say there's probably still going to be some of those people that are on those social media platforms. I'm not going to say any names in particular where they just, they're going to bash. Yeah. And that's what they do. And even if a vendor contact reaches out to them and says, Hey, 
reach out to me, they don't. So uh, I just want to, you know, throw that out there that you know, people are people, people are stupid. Yeah. And some of this is going to happen. But I like the fact that, you know, in the portal, there's a chat that can come up and they can get that instant communication. And that should be good. Yeah, I, I, that's a very fair statement. I think, but we're not going to solve it all. But we, I think we, <laughs> right. we, we take it to a whole nother level that right. hasn't existed before. Yeah. So the question comes up, you know, a lot of vendors, and you mentioned there's 35,000 or however many more. I mean, I know that I worked with some vendors that are not a part of the regular channel rotation. So for somebody that logs in a Navistat, Navistack, puts their vendor in and they're not a, a vendor, can they still show up in the stack, even though they may not be a partner? Yes. So what's happening right now, so one right now, if, if they're in our platform as a free profile and they're you know seated as a free profile, you would still be able to add them to your stack. If it if they don't exist, we're getting an alert in, in real time and essentially within 24 hours adding that that company slash product. And then we'll alert the MSP, hey, you can now add, you know, XYZ vendor product to your stack. So yes. All right. Now, I have to imagine that there are obviously going to, is going to be some overlap. There are going to be multiple vendors within a certain category because they may do two completely different things with even within that same category. But is there a way that Navistack could say, help me evaluate, hey, you've got two vendors that are kind of doing the same thing. Would you look at this vendor and maybe consolidate? Are, are we going to get anything like that where Navistack may be able to guide us into consolidation or better choices or, or something along those lines? Yeah, I, I love where we're going with this. Um, so Matt's sharing his screen again. Um, what you don't see on this screen, you see it, I think, in the view stacks of scores um uh based on the product reviews and so that that's kind of the first layer first level of you know kind of differentiating between the different vendors and so you see here um as matt scrolling down you'll see some of the vendors and in, in their score okay uh, as we progress uh we will lean more in you know more into uh you know product category differentiation so uh feature comparisons uh and uh yeah and then help help make decisions based on again all the all the data that's been you know provided by by the industry i think something that uh we're really looking forward to and and as matt mentioned we launched this all of uh just over a week ago a week and a half ago but as we get to we call it critical mass but as we get to you know a couple thousand um uh msps and and you know managing their stack or inputting you know their stack in here we can start doing benchmarking um, obviously everything's anonymized and, and we start with the, the concept of protecting everyone's privacy in this platform. Um, but what we can do is say, all right, well, if you're an MSP in, in Tulsa or, or Minneapolis, um, we can say, this is what your stack looks like that this, but this is what the stack looks like, you know, uh, with your contemporaries, you know, based on, you know, maybe you're a $2 million MSP, or maybe it's based on number of endpoints. And so we can start, you know, start sharing. Uh, this, is, this is what your stack looks like in comparison to others in this space. Uh, so there's some really, really interesting benchmarking that we can do along the way. Uh, but yeah, we really want to lean into, you know, leveraging the product reviews and the scoring to give give people, you know, the the, the ability to make decisions within the platform um, based on the technologies that they're, you know, using or they may want to use. And that's that's one of the features that we've built into this is that you can, when you select a product category, select a vendor and a product that you're working with, you have the option to say, yes, I am a current partner. Uh, and it'll send the vendor a request to say, hey, they're a current partner, you know, and, and they want access to your materials inside of your, your PRM, or I'm just interested in this vendor. And so we'll send an inquiry to the vendor saying, hey, this, this MSP is asking for more information on, you know, as Matt's typing in SAS alerts. You know, I'd like more information so we can we can broker that uh, conversation or you know that communication that way uh, between the MSP and and the vendor. Yeah. 
and and the other thing just worth mentioning again i apologize if you're not seeing the visual um in addition to be able to put the, the vendors that you work with on your stack you know marvin you're seeing there's some gray areas right dark web monitoring yeah for this quote unquote msp they might not have a dark web monitoring company and so you know again this is version one we'll get into you know suggested vendors so that they see what other vendors because a lot of times people just don't even know uh who offers these these types of things you see it all the time in all the conversations who 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 should i look into for this product or this category uh so you know getting into suggested vendors taking you know potentially on that path um and making them making vendors more accessible to them and particularly the ones that they don't uh, you know you know we built a lot of this in the very beginning uh, around emerging vendors but you know there's a lot of vendors that msps just don't hear from at an in-person event that are making investments in the msp in the channel um, but they just may have not heard of them yet so All right well this certainly beats at least here's my thought is that eventually this will beat somebody going into a social media post and saying hey what are you guys using for x go <laughs> you know? um, yeah. yeah yeah like it, 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 matt mentioned right we we can get into the this area of, of suggesting some of the vendors that are are partnering with us on the platform but at the end of the day again it, it really comes down to you gotta look at the product reviews right I think, again that's this that's the most democratic uh you know uh you know way to make decisions in this in this entire platform and so you know we encourage you know folks to go through each one of the 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 product uh, reviews if they're looking at a vendor. And there's some really interesting things uh, on these product reviews, some of the data that we're getting on uh, on the product reviews. It's not just, you know, their level of satisfaction or, or maybe dissatisfaction, but we're also getting some really interesting roadmap suggestions um, that uh, I think some of the vendors that have received uh, these product reviews and we're, we're sharing the roadmap suggestions with them, they're like, I never thought of that. Uh, so that, I think that's one of, one of the big benefits on the vendor you know side of the house uh, is that you know they've got their partners you know making suggestions, improvements, and and different technologies they should be integrating uh, into and and again putting my vendor hat back on, taking the MSP hat off. That was one of the hardest things uh, for any vendor uh, to do is to aggregate and then action. Uh, product roadmap suggestions from your from your partners most vendors are not very good at creating product advisory councils and and listening to feedback and prioritizing that stuff on the roadmap and these product reviews you know are, are one way that we're we're cutting through that noise as well uh, so it's giving the the msp a voice uh, but it's also consolidating that and helping the vendor make better decisions to better support their their msps and their their roadmaps yeah, I was going to say I was, it, it equally benefits the MSPs because now their voice is finally being heard because I can tell I'll break down the conversation for the people who aren't aware of, of what takes place. Vendors are trying to grow fast. They're on the road. We come back from an event. I hear something. Kevin hears something. Somebody else hears something. We just verbally throw it up to our product manager and they're like, don't know what to do with it all. And half the time, it just doesn't resonate the same as seeing it written by the MSP. So to finally have a place where your feedback is actually being pulled out in a report and that that person's now going to the product manager or the dev team and saying, this isn't coming from me. Here is the feedback directly from the MSPs and it is in written form and it's just more powerful. And for you as an MSP, that means you're getting heard and these route roadmap things are probably getting pushed up much quicker. So I think we're gonna I think this could, you know, make a significant difference in getting these vendors to listen to their to their own MSP community. Well, I want to kind of go back when we started the show for listeners who know who you guys are. Um, it's kind of a no brainer, but for listeners that may not know uh, what the channel program is and uh, let me see if I can do a one minute or one sentence summary and then you guys clear it up a little bit better. But my idea of the channel program is, you know, trying to become the ultimate MSP vendor platform for uniting the best MSPs with the best vendors and putting them together 
Okay, I just lost it right there. <laughs> that, you, know, you know, that's microphone drop worthy anyway. I mean, that, 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 that ultimately that, that's what it's all about, right? It's, it's, we wanted to build a platform that just took the friction, took the friction out of, out of the marketplace. I mean, you know how ridiculously fragmented, you think about it in kind of different layers, right? It's not just the fact that there's product sprawl and overwhelm. And I always give the example you know, with ID agent, one of the things we wanted to do is look different. Everybody, and surprisingly, they still do. Every cybersecurity company still uses the hacker with the hoodie and the iceberg and, you know, what's underneath the surface and all that stuff. And, you know, we built this, to, we built ID agent with this kind of, you know, to, to look different, you know, to be different in this marketplace. Um, and, you know, that worked. Um, but ultimately, like, you know, with this platform, you know, we wanted to, you know, build something that would take the friction out, help MSPs understand the difference between the different technology solutions out there because everyone looks and sounds the same. Uh, so help them make, you know, better decisions. And then kind of that other, uh, you know, piece of fragmentation is that, I, I don't know, you know, Matt's on the road a heck of a lot more than I am. Um, but actually, you know, maybe a way to, way, to, way to describe this is if you go up onto our site and look at the industry calendar, I think we have something like close to 400 industry events up on our calendar. And you think about, again, fragmentation, you know, and, and MSPs making decisions, which events they should go to, which ones are educational, which ones are just, are just sales pitches, which ones have peer groups attached to them, which, you know, which ones are going to be most beneficial, which ones are regional. Um, and so if we could build a platform that took a lot of the, the friction out of that decision making and just centralized a lot of that stuff. Then then I think we'd have a material impact. Matt's showing um you know, the, the calendar here. Yep, right? there's the calendar. Well, yeah. I wanted to say this in a sense of, you know, for a long time, we did not have a place to go and find out this information without simply asking our friends, mm -hmm. asking other MSPs. Uh, one of the things that I've been trying to do on this show is gain more presence for everybody mm -hmm. so that yep. you know, I'm not just on the show talking about who I use and who I like. I'm going to bring on anybody I can because there's that could utilize a service that somebody's providing and we need to be better at providing resources and helping each other. And you guys have done that. That's why I wanted to go back and say, this is what the channel program is doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've got the industry event calendar up there and it's not just that you guys are, you know, curating this information. Vendors no. can go themselves and put their events on your calendar. Well, and I think, yeah, no, and it's important to note, this is the most consolidated calendar that exists in the space because it's not just the large events or the big regional events. This is getting down to webinar level, thought leadership, local lunch and learns, pretty much demo days. Like I know Axiant does some demo days each week. CyberFox does as well. So it's, it's really an open ecosystem within itself and you know we get equally positive feedback from both the vendor side and the msp side because you know marvin one of the things you'll notice here on this august calendar is every event is on tuesday wednesday and thursday yeah right except with the exception of two and so you know we've been talking to vendors and yeah you're not gonna you might not get as much attendance on a monday friday but if if you're the only one in town doing something, whether it's even, I mean, in a virtual capacity, it still could be an interesting opportunity because there's not much going on in, in, in the space at that time. Um, and then the next iterations of the industry calendar, you know, you will be able to sort by local events. Like, so if you, do you really know what's going on in your city? Because well, that was, that was yeah. the question <laughs> I was going to ask you, because there are a ton of things that are a ton of things that happen here in Fort Lauderdale or yeah. Miami. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't need to travel well, I shouldn't say it that way. <laughs> you know, I take an annual trip across the yeah. Mississippi to go, you know, out west to see a big event when there are tons of events local to me that, you know, may be more beneficial, you know, um, maybe not. But being able to see them and know that they exist is part of the problem. Yeah. And I, especially for the secondary cities who will all often scream bloody, bloody murder that they want events coming to, you know, I shouldn't name what's what who's considered a secondary city, but you know, just not Fort Chicago. <laughs> sure, Fort Lauderdale, but that's an example. And and but the, but they need you all to show up from Fort Lauderdale in order to ever come back. And so that's one of those issues. Is I I think oftentimes, like you said, they don't know what's going on in their own neck of the woods. And I had an MSP tell me 
after I showed him the industry calendar, he said, I've been going to 16 different websites for all this information that you're putting on a single page. You know what I mean? That, and that's, that goes back to the, this mission of like making MSBs live a year. What, what is all over the place that we can consolidate and make easier for MSPs to access it? Wow. Are we really going to get to a single pane of glass? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we try not to say that term, but it's hard not to. <laughs> Well, All right, guys. This... Well, I, I mean, so so far, Navistack looked good. Yeah, I appreciate I, it. We... You guys are on the right are on the right track. And uh, I, I was going to ask you. We kind of got uh, into some other stuff there, but it looks like there was a section where if you didn't see a category, you can add a category. So it sounds like there's some customization that we could do. Does that customization also go to maybe we use a vendor, but not in the category that they're in can we slide them into another category yes okay yep. yeah. yeah we thought that was a, that was something we discussed and definitely important but yeah you you know we we've given you kind of the benchmark of i think the, the first kind of 30 product categories that you know kind of deemed to be the the, the traditional ones that msps have but absolutely i mean we've been seeing requests for you know i mean it's, we knew it's part of your stack but you know a, i don't know was it like fresh books or something you know like so whatever Whatever you want to put in to your stack, you can essentially add it to, to that category. It could be right. operational. I mean, this, we wanted yeah. this platform to be, you know, usable by the technician, by the sales and marketing, you know, resources in the organization and by the business owner. And so, yeah, so we, we've tried to build as much flexibility into it uh, as we could, you know, to your and, point. Yeah. And, and Marvin, I know we're, we're, we're up on time, but it, do you mind if we just take and Kevin, I'll give you the microphone. Do We're it, not like, on time. <laughs> all right. Yes, well, whatever you got to say, say. All right. Well, because, you know, this is version one uh, okay. of Navistack. And I think it is important to talk about where we're headed because, you know, one of the things we, we're saying is we want to become the homepage for MSPs. And, and Kevin, I'll let you kind of tee up, you know, sort of the next versions that are coming out with, you know, the scoring and, and the benchmarking. Yeah, boy, I hope we get this right. We we kind of touched on uh, the benchmark. I only say that because we just got off a, a two plus hour uh, product roadmap call with like 250 some odd uh, uh, things to go through. But uh, we mentioned the uh, the benchmarking that that's been um, to me that that should have a pretty significant impact on the industry to be able to kind of you know we know we you know MSPs talk about this stuff in their peer groups and you know what have you, but. It really to be able to see across the industry, you know, what stacks look like comparatively. And then ultimately, as we get into, you know, pricing differentiation and, um, you know, we'll be able to service some really, I think, amazing insights to the MSPs. And then um, so there's that, there's going to be a ton of visualization uh, that we put in this platform. So we talked about uh, the industry calendar. So it's not just that we want to be able to, you know, drop down and pick Fort Lauderdale. We want you to be able to look on a map and say, right, here, these are all the events that are within 25 miles or 50 miles. But then on the same, you know, inversely for the vendor, we want the vendor to be going and say, maybe I have, you know, critical mass with MSPs in the Northwest, but I'm, I'm pretty weak down in, you know, the mid-Atlantic, you know, show me all the events that are in the mid-Atlantic so we can help the vendor make decisions about, you know, where to, where to invest their time and efforts in building out their channel. So we'll, we'll, we'll lean pretty heavily into visual visualization and then, you know, really surfacing meaningful data to, um, you know, to the MSPs to help them make better decisions, help them understand where their business is and may, and maybe, you know, directionally where they might want to take their product stack and, and, um, you know, and, and evolve their organization. So there's a, there's a number of things that we can do, you know, in this platform that really, really provides significant benefit to the channel. And that's, that's what we're, that's what we're all about. Very nice. Very nice. Well, folks, the channel program doing a lot of things to help us out channelprogram.com. If you want to get specific with the Navistack, add a slash Navistack to that. Uh, also, on the, we didn't even talk about the fact that you guys do a monthly live stream called uh, Channel Exchange. So a lot of opportunities to uh, get in front of other MSPs and vendors and make yeah. that hand holding better. Yeah, and, and and you mentioned it, and I think you're interviewing. I don't know if you are you interviewing every one of the pitch it con contestants. I already did that. Yep. Already okay. Did that. We got <laughs> yeah. the man of the summer is done. 
Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we, we are hosting a, a version of our, of our typical pitch event uh, engage, but yeah, it's, it's, I think there's eight or nine vendors on each one. We've had to shorten the time because of the amount of vendors, yeah, yeah. but it, but it's really cool. Cause I mean, MSPs get to have a first glance at sort of the future uh, of the channel. And, you know, you had, some pretty neat technologies that came through this, you know, Vana High Security, who ended up getting acquired. Um, you know, so there's been some really neat technologies, and this is the great place to get to know them early. And and Marvin, I'm sure you know, if you if you engage with the vendor in the early days, you you get priority on a lot of things, and you probably get grandfathered into pricing and things that don't exist uh, anymore. So um, it's it's definitely unique, and you can give your direct feedback. It's, um, they, it's they like that. Yeah. I like that. Exactly. So yeah, so this year, so your battle royale, I actually have it here to make sure oh, perfect. We, you mentioned here, you've got three <laughs> dates coming up Thursday, August 24th, Tuesday, August 29th, Thursday, August 31st, all at 9am Pitchett's Battle Royale. Yeah, and that'd be I think that's 9am Pacific. So 12 a.m. 12 p.m. Oh. Eastern, I think. Okay, unless I'm wrong, gotta say that gotta say that. So <laughs> I just always assume it's Eastern. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, guys, this is fantastic. I, like I said, I, I'm on the site. I just didn't start, you know, doing my tic-tac-toe. I'm going to do that a little bit later and okay. uh, hope to catch up with you guys when the next iteration is out. Excellent. Thanks Thank you me. so much for having us, Marvin. We always appreciate it and uh, right. love what you do for the community. Thanks, guys. All right. Kevin Lancaster, Matt Solomon with the channel program. We will see them again soon. Uh, participate in their battle royale on the dates that we mentioned. We'll have all the links in the show notes, and we will keep trying to bring you all the things that will help benefit fit us as MSPs and the channel. And we'll be back with more eh, sometime soon. We'll see you then. Holla. Mm -hmm.